Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're going to go over everything you need to know on AMC stock. What happened in the markets today? Today is Friday. That means stocks will not be trading tomorrow unless something crazy were to happen. <laughs> Obviously, they're not going to be trading. Now, even on Monday, markets are going to be closed. Now, we are seeing someone called the 50 cent trader. No, not 50 cent the rapper. 50 cent the trader. That is... Well, making a reappearance potentially in our markets. Now, this individual is known for placing the right trade at the right time. He bets on volatility. So he bets on the VIX. It can be to the upside or to the downside. What he just did, well, yeah, it's not exactly looking great for our markets going ahead. Now, he likely does not have the inside scoop on what is really coming next so in all reality he could be wrong right but these are very big very near term very aggressive leaning trades we're going to share that trade with you here in this video and go over just everything you need to know about our markets because right now just things don't look good right things don't look good for amc as well this this is not a pretty situation this is not a good situation we're in right now and i think you guys obviously know that right you're an investor in amc if you're watching this video amc stock is basically hitting new multi-year lows almost every single day that's a big problem right that is not good amc stock is now a penny stock amc is under five dollars per share amc is at four dollars 54 cents per share and unfortunately the markets are at all-time highs now, why is that unfortunate? Well, odds are definitely skewed towards a fall from here than a rise. And if we fall in the market, let's say we go through a correction-like event, AMC stock's going to get pummeled even more, right? That's why this situation could get worse. Now, AMC stock, if you're looking at any technical indicators, AMC stock is bottom of the barrel. Uh, very, very suppressed right now. The RSI on AMC is 21.36, which is very, very low. Okay. Um, this is back to the same basically levels that you were at um, after the reverse split and after AMC stock got absolutely decimated. Okay. And that's because we're just really not going higher at all. It's, it's just basically a downward move day in and day out. You could see we dropped 8.67% here on uh, January 3rd. Next day, you drop 5%. The day after that, you dropped about 3%. Then you bounced 2.3%. Then you fell 5%. Then you fell 2.5%. Then you fell 4.28%. And now you've fallen another 3% here today. So it's down day after down day after down day. I wish the situation looked better. But unfortunately, it does not. And the situation is probably not going to get much better at least in the near term and again to the point the s p 500 is trading at all-time highs it actually hit a new all-time high today at least the spy this accounts for dividends as well so the spx did not hit a new all-time high today um because that does not account for dividends but the spy the etf the tracks the s p did because it accounts for dividends so this is a bit of a problem because the markets are so bullish, now you're getting a divergence again, where stocks like AMC, stocks like a Tesla, stocks like a Fubo, a SoFi, a Palantir, a PayPal, a DraftKings, all of these different names that I personally own, a lot of you guys might own, um, have not been doing well, right? Not at all. But the markets are at all-time highs. That's because the stocks that are now performing the best are your big tech names again. I think my lip's bleeding. Stupid Michigan winters and the snowstorm we're getting right now. Hope my power don't go out. But uh, nonetheless, you're seeing a, again, top heavy market. And that's a problem, right? That is a, a big problem because... You either see a catch up or a catch down move from here. The biggest problem is potentially going to be earnings season. Now, Tesla reports earnings on January 24th. You're also going to get Netflix. You're going to get some other names that report. That's going to be um, 
here here over the next couple of weeks. And before even then, you're going to get more banks and other institutions. But in the first um, week of February or so, you are going to get a lot of names. That's when you're going to get all of your big tech. You're going to get Microsoft. You're going to get Google. You're going to get Amazon. You're going to get Apple. Apple reports earnings on February 1st, all of those other guys, uh, which that is on Thursday, right? The first um, Thursday of uh, February, all of those other guys. So if they report bad numbers or just not as great numbers as what Wall Street expects, the markets right now are very vulnerable to fall. At this point, it's going to be a lot easier to fall than to rise. And that's a sticky situation, a tricky situation. Now, what the markets are currently pricing in for the S&P 500 earnings growth in 2024, it's 11%. 11% earnings growth is high for any normal year, let alone a year in which we're still dealing with inflation. We're now seeing problems with the Red Sea contagion um, via the shipping costs uh, that have just went crazy up like 300% in, in two or three weeks. Uh, you do have problems out there, right? A yield curve that is inverted. I'm, I'm not oblivious to those problems. And my point is the path of, of least resistance ahead is probably downwards, right? I don't think a lot of people are going to argue if, if stocks fall from here, if earnings are bad. There's, there's not a lot to back up, you know, bad earnings. That's the next biggest problem. Now, the problem beyond that is going to be the economic data. It is going to be um, GDP, which should come out as well in February or, or, or towards uh, late January, we should get preliminary numbers, but that's going to be another problem. So at this point, when AMC stock has continuously continued to fall and you're looking at a backdrop that is about as good as it's going to get, that's a problem. That's a tricky situation. Adam Aaron, AMC, they need to do this ASAP. They need to tell shareholders, we will not be diluting you. If they do not do that, AMC stock may not stabilize and AMC may fall under $4 per share. AMC could pretty soon be a $3 stock if we don't get this commitment from Adam Aaron soon. It's not looking likely though. It, I'm, I'm not feeling that confident about Adam Aaron's management decisions. And that is a bit of a problem. Now, I want to share with you guys this trade that was put on. Let's first run through the Ortex data so I don't forget to do that here in this video. We have seen nine orders totaling $438,000 um, via the sentiment gauge from Ortex. These are option orders with a positive order value of 2%. If you take a look at the volume side, puts actually were, were more traded today than calls at 54.44% of the total volume to the put side and 45.56% of the total volume to the call side so not exactly spectacular um numbers that you are uh, seeing over here if you take a look at the short um data you do have 9.2 percent short interest off your float 108 million dollars worth of short positions days to cover 1.16 23.05 million shares currently sold short shares out on loan 17.58 million cost to borrow 1.08 utilization of 29.84 percent and a short score of 54.26 out of 100 uh so again not the most exciting uh numbers over here as well definitely could be a lot better now we did get good news today. We talked about this in the last video. We had PPI that came in much better than expectations. PPI was actually negative 0.1% uh, month over month. So that should be a good sign that CPI is probably going to get a benefit from PPI, or at least producers are probably not going to continue to pass on costs to consumers. This is the first time PPI has been negative in, uh, well, not the first time, but PPI being negative again is definitely a great sign. Last month, you were negative as well. People were actually expecting this to go positive. So PPI tends to lead into CPI. So PPI continuing to be negative is pretty uh, a pretty good sign that we will continue to see progress on inflation. That's why stocks initially rallied, but it just wasn't enough to uh, keep, keep uh, the markets, you know, good today. And I think there's other things that are currently in play, like the markets are currently pricing in or starting to price in a hard landing. You had a hotter than expected CPI report. Um, and what happened? While bond yields fell, the odds of rate cuts increased. You are now looking at 
a 76.9% chance of a rate cut in March. Uh, when when the Fed is saying, absolutely not, are we even thinking about cutting rates in March? Last week, the probability was 64.0%. Now it's 76.9%. That's off the chain. Now, for the end of the year, uh, for 2024, the markets are pricing in uh, what looks to be, let's see, let's, might actually have to count these just so we're 100% accurate. Pricing in one, two, three, four, five, six rate cuts in 2024. Uh, at 40, geez, it's getting stuck. At 40%, um, 40%, the previous day probability was 41.4%. Last week was 35.1%. So that's pretty interesting. Um, you are seeing, yeah, the, the probabilities just moved around a lot. This is not what it looked like earlier today. So that's pretty interesting. Someone came in with some big uh, Fed futures bets here and changed the probabilities. So we'll have to see. But still, you're pricing in six rate cuts and the bond market is completely disagreeing with what the Fed is saying. So that is a little bit problematic here considering CPI just came in hotter than expected. But really, I think the big threat to our markets is definitely going to be earnings. If earnings come in weak, guys... Uh, it's 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 one thing to say that S&P is trading at a 20 times foreign multiple. Well, okay, that's based on the expectations for earnings co coming in line with 11% growth. If those earnings are 5% growth, then your then your EPS then you're really paying more than 20 times earnings. Then you're paying uh, you know 23 or 24 times earnings. That's a problem. Okay, that's 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 a big problem. Now this trade that was put on today. I think you need a little bit of a backstory. So the 50 cent trader, not 50 cent the rapper, he is known for being at the right place at the right time, buying VIX futures, typically shorter term in nature. Um, and he goes in with quite a bit of money. Now he tends to make a lot of money as well. Um, back in 2018, the mysterious trader nicknamed 50 cent made 200 million as the market blew up. He, uh, he basically goes goes in the VIX short term around 50 cents a piece for the contracts and you know uh tends to tends to be correct a lot right that's that's why it's he's infamous um in regards to this trade now back in 2018 he uh he bought 50,000 VIX contracts call options which implies the markets will fall and volatility will pick up um and made about 200 million dollars now He's, he's done this many times, right? 2023 in February before the banking crisis. He's done this uh, before the Rony Rona crash in 2020. Back in 2017, he was even known, right? This article was May 4, 2017, a 50 cent trading uh, mystery focuses on a 20 billion uh, London fund, London hedge fund. Nobody really knows who this is or, or uh, what's going on. It could be the dang government for all we know. But they have struck again. Now, they've struck again today, actually. VIX Trader dropped 17 million on a bet that eerie stock market calm won't last. It says a trader bought about 250,000, so about five times as much as what they bought in, uh, uh, what was that, 2018 during the whole Christmas crash fiasco. With a strike price of 17 that expire on February 14th, the trader spent about 16.7 million in premium with each contract costing between roughly 63 cents and 67 cents. The VIX hasn't traded above 17 since early November. Quote, it's hard to know if it's an outright bearish bet on the market or an aggressive portfolio hedge after a big move, said Steve Sosnick, chief strategist at Interactive Brokers. Either way, it expresses concern that we could see a bit of a pullback during or after earnings season. A sense of calm has descended on the stock market. What's a uh, stock market that's trading steps away from an all-time high, and the position implies a modest pickup in volatility in a little over a month. The trade captures potential moves on a number of key data figures, including consumer price index, which will be released on the day prior to the expiration date, as well as potential swings as companies 
report fourth quarter earnings. This is probably a trade on fourth quarter earnings, right? This is probably a trade on bad earnings. Now, if you take a look at the VIX itself, the VIX is trading at some of the lowest levels it has traded at in recent times right you have to go back to 2020 to see the vix this low or 2021 at some point you were also this low but this does not happen all the time so he's basically betting the vix goes to about 17 but the vix could ultimately rally more than that it just depends on the severity of the crash so um i personally did go in and make a trade a similar trade actually before I even seen this article, because I heard this on Bloomberg News, they were talking about this trade, and it's been a while since I've heard of 50 Cent, the mysterious VIX trader. So I went out and I bought uh, the $20 calls for February 14th. Come to find out this 50 Cent trader bought the, uh, the, the $17 call. So that's pretty interesting. We were thinking along the same lines. If you guys wanna see that trade that I put on, check out that link down below in the description of this video. Either way, this is not a fantastic sign of what could be to come next in our markets. And unfortunately, if if, if we do see uh, you know volatility pick up, stocks fall, that's gonna be really, really bad news for AMC when AMC is currently trading at these low levels, guys. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.